train. That is Dr. Anjali Kotsi, chairperson of the South African Medical Association and somebody who we should all be listening to right now. Doctor, I uh, really appreciate you joining us uh, this morning, an important interview. I hope we had the time. I was publishing stuff from you and some of your colleagues on Twitter yesterday and over the weekend. I saw Professor Salim Karim saying that current vaccines may actually still be effective against Omicron from your vantage point. What do we know right now and what might the world and some world leaders be getting wrong? Uh, good morning and uh, good morning to all your viewers out there. So, yeah, that's a very interesting question. So there's two things that we can look at it from two angles. The one is what do we know? is um, what are we as clinical practitioners or family practitioners see on ground level? And what are our current ICU status? And then on the other hand, the other angle is what are the um, uh, scientists seeing and, and their experience? Because it's two, uh, I want to say it's actually two worlds. One is a scientific world and the other one is the clinical world. So um, at this stage in um, what we are observing, um, is mild cases. Um, as in this morning, I already saw three cases, but all three children, um, under the age one, the oldest was 13, and, they, and a 10-year-old, and I think the yeah. other one is seven years old. So mild um, cases, again, to easily treated at home. The cases that we have seen last week and the week before last week, also mild cases, um, so we are looking for the, the severe cases because the severe cases is what's going to say we are in trouble. Uh, I presume that might come yeah. later, but not now. Now it's mild symptoms, easily treated at home. Okay, the, the data we were looking at, and I published some, uh, some national South African data showing that across the nation, hospitalizations are well down from your winter. However, in the Gauteng province, Johannesburg, one of the most densely populated areas in the world, we have seen hospitalizations triple off their lows of a couple of weeks ago. Can you tell us what the current trend of hospitalizations is and what we may know about who is in the hospital, vaccinated, unvaccinated, old, young, et cetera, doctor? So, so that data is not available currently. So even if the, the, the numbers are, you know, it's, uh, I'm not sure where, where the data is coming up that from that the, the numbers tripled in the hospitals, um, because in um, the Pretoria region hospitals, which is the epicenter, I did a survey yesterday and uh, mostly two patients. Um, I know of one patient that's been ventilated currently in one of the private hospitals, and the others are there before um, we have started to see in 18 day, uh, on the 18th of November um, these cases. So, um, I, you know, it might be that the public sector hospital seeing a, a, a bigger influx of patients. And then again, I'm also not aware that they are under any strain at this stage um, um, of, the, of, of the gun. Again, that might change. I know that yeah. by one of hospital, is, a, is where Prof. Ruda is. They have seen um, a, a few young people with comorbidities coming in into the ICU. Whether that's um, om, uh, uh, Omicron or Delta, I don't know. Yeah, that, that is coming, by the way, from the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. So I published the website yesterday, and that's kind of what here in the U.S. a lot of people in, in the media, including myself, are looking at and sending around. Should we not be looking at that data for the accurate or at least entire picture, Dr. Kotze? Yes, we, we can look at that the data. Um, you know, I'm also looking at our um, data that we have seen this the, today from um, Discovery Health. And again, um, there's nothing significant um, that say, yes, we are moving into a real problem going forward. Um, and um, the, we will have to look, and we keep on saying, going forward, within the next two weeks, we will know what is happening. Um, if you look at the data in Gauteng, if you looked at the data, you will notice that yesterday, um, out of uh, 12,300 patients tested, um, only 2,300 was positive. And um, Again, we're not aware of um, massive um, admissions to hospitals. It's, it's not there, um, not in, not in the, the Pretoria okay. region. 
Well, that that's very, very good news. And, you know, and as I pointed out, the, South Africa has some of the world's, if not the world's leading virology labs and research scientists, because you and your colleagues have been dealing with so many viruses. You've been fighting HIV and AIDS for so many years that that you are identifying some of these mutations before the rest of the world. Do you feel like because you did identify and share this mutation uh, and, and allowing scientists and vaccine makers to sequence the data, do you feel like South Africa is then sort of getting almost um, a, a bad rap in terms of the virus because many people are saying, well, this is where it, quote, came from. We do not know the origins of this strain, do we, Dr. Coetzee? You simply sequenced it, identified it, and shared it. Yes, you are absolutely correct. And that's the tragedy of it all. You know, we try to do due diligence. Our clinician, uh, our scientists um, said, listen, look, this is what we have seen. Um, we share the data. We're telling you um, there are 30 plus mutations. Um, we don't know what it means. We don't know what it means going forward. Um, exactly what they did with the beta variant, which was detected in South Africa also. And they also then um, alerted the rest of the world. But this time, the world reacted different towards us. And, um, and again, as in any pandemic. It's very, very early uh, uh, wave. This is very, very early days. Um, we are mostly seeing young people coming in. Uh, the, the elderly that I have seen and that we have, uh, you know, with positive uh, tests that has been vaccinated, again, mild cases, really, really mild cases. No one has been uh, um, need for yeah. um, any hospitalization. So it might change because if the un unvaccinated people with comorbidities get sick going forward, yes, they will be admitted. But that's not to say that the, that the vaccine didn't work because they were not vaccinated. 